Hello. My name is Dr. Karen Ehrman, and I'm an interventional radiologist at Community Health Network. And today I'd like to talk to you about a very common problem in women called uterine fibroids and the treatment of uterine fibroids without surgery. So what really are uterine fibroids? Well, the good news is that they're benign tumors. They are oftentimes called leiomyomas or myomas. They can be anywhere really in the uterus. They can be in the wall of the uterus, they can be in the cavity of the uterus, or even hanging off the outside of the uterus. And just a quick review of the anatomy. You have a vagina, which then goes into the cervix, and then you have a uterus. And attached to the uterus through fallopian tubes are the ovaries. So when we talk about uterine fibroids and we talked about the different locations, that really does become important when we are talking about how to go about treating these fibroids. And this really is just a diagram to show the different locations that fibroids can be in. So a very common question I get asked a lot is, what causes these? Well, unfortunately, the exact etiology is really unknown. But we do know several things. We know that there is some genetic predisposition. Oftentimes, my patients will say, my mother had fibroids, my grandmother did. So we do know it runs in families. The other thing we know about fibroids is that estrogen or even progesterone, two common hormones, can s stimulate the growth of fibroids. So I started the talk by saying how common this problem is. Well, we know that up to 50% of African-American women will eventually develop fibroids. We know that up to 30% of all women can have this. Usually, it's diagnosed in women in the 30s and 40s. The most common age to become symptomatic with the fibroids are in the mid-40s. We know that they're the most common tumor uh, in women. Now, the good news is that the vast majority of these women are asymptomatic, meaning that there's really, you have them, but they're not causing you any real problems. Unfortunately, some of these fibroids can be very troublesome and symptomatic to women. Let's talk about the symptoms a little bit. The usual symptoms are that women will complain of very heavy menstrual bleeding. Sometimes they'll even pass clots. And when there's a lot of heavy menstrual bleeding, it could be during your period or it can be even throughout the month. And when you have heavy bleeding, anemia can occur. And most women who have fibroids and have very heavy periods may not even know they're anemic. What happens is that you feel tired. You feel like you just can't hardly make it through the day. Those are some symptoms of anemia and something you should talk to your doctor about. Another very common symptom with fibroids are pain or pressure in the pelvis. Some women may even describe lower back pain. And this is oftentimes due to where the fibroids are located and the other surrounding structures that they're pressing on. So if you can imagine that the uterus is sitting right by the bladder, and if the uterus is enlarged, you can actually get some frequent urination due to the uterus or the fibroids pushing on the bladder. If the fibroids or pushing on the bowel, you can get constipation. One of the other symptoms that some women will talk about is pain during intercourse. Fortunately, this is not a usual symptom, but can be due to fibroids. And one of the very troublesome 
symptoms that many women will talk about is bloating. They'll say, doctor, my pants aren't fitting like they used to. The waistband is tight. And so that can be due to the fibroids causing enlargement in the uterus and feeling almost like you're pregnant. This is really just a diagram of showing how the location of the fibroids in the uterus can push, push on other uh, structures. For instance, it can push on the colon if the fibroids are located towards the back side of the uterus. So if you have these symptoms, such as heavy menstrual bleeding or pressure in the pelvis, how are fibroids diagnosed? Oftentimes, fibroids are diagnosed during your annual gynecologic examination, your pelvic exam. Your doctor may decide by just feeling on your pelvic exam that you have an enlarged uterus. So once your doctor makes the decision on a pelvic exam that your uterus seems to be enlarged, oftentimes they will order an pelvic ultrasound. An ultrasound is a great way to make a diagnosis of fibroids. But oftentimes we need more detail when we're looking at the fibroids, especially when we're considering treatment options. And that specialized test that we often use is an MRI. There is other conditions besides the fibroids that can cause an enlargement of the uterus. One is something called adenomyosis, which is a benign condition, but is not fibroids. Another could be ovarian cysts, which would be mistaken for fibroids. So this is just really a picture showing the different ways of diagnosing and imaging the uterus to look for fibroids. As you probably know, the ultrasound is a non-invasive test where we use a probe on the outside of the skin. We also, however, will use a probe through the vagina to get a closer and more detailed look of the uterus. And this is just a diagram of an MRI. So another way that your doctor can diagnose fibroids is actually using a scope where they will go in through the vagina into the uterus and they can see within the uterine cavity the fibroids if that's where they're located. And this is a picture of an image taken through a hysteroscope where the fibroids are sitting within the endometrial cavity. So now your fibroids have been diagnosed and your doctor feels like they're the cause of your symptoms. How do we go about treating them? Well, fortunately, there's a whole wide spectrum of treatment. One can be as aggressive as hysterectomy or non-aggressive, non-invasive using hormones. We're going to talk about that briefly, but mainly what we're going to focus on today is the treatment called uterine fibroid embolization. And this is a treatment that has made a huge difference for women who are seeking non-surgical alternatives. So if the fibroids are not causing symptoms, you really don't necessarily have to treat them. Because remember what I said at the beginning of this talk, the vast majority of fibroids, really all of them, are benign. So if your symptoms are causing you so much trouble with daily activities, we will start looking for treatment options. I talked about hormones. Oftentimes the first line therapy in the treatment of fibroids is using birth control pills or other kinds of hormonal therapy. However, if your fibroids are not well controlled using hormones, we do have other things to offer without having surgery. One of the things that many of you might 
have been put on by your doctor is a hormone called Lupron. Lupron basically shuts down estrogen production. And what happens is it can cause you to go into menopause. The good news about Lupron is that it will shrink fibroids. The bad news about Lupron is that it can cause a whole lot of side effects for women who are taking them. Just think about the menopause side effects and think about that happening overnight. And those symptoms can be very troubling for patients. The other problem with Lupron is that it can really only be used for a short period of time because of the side effects. And then what happens when you stop it? The fibroids can grow back. So if hormones are not the right option for you, or you're not having success controlling the treatment with the... Okay, we're going to start over. So if hormones are not working for you or you're having side effects and you're still experiencing symptoms of the fibroids, how else can we treat these? Well, you've certainly probably heard of hysterectomy where the surgeon removes the uterus. Another surgical treatment is called myomectomy. And the myomectomy means they're taking out the fibroids but keeping the the uterus intact. There's another treatment called endometrial ablation. Unfortunately, this is usually not effective for any larger fibroids. And then this is the treatment that I'm involved with. This is uterine fibroid embolization. And this is done by an interventional radiologist. So we talked about, just briefly, some of the advantages and disadvantages of the cervical Okay, we'll start that one. So we've talked about surgical treatments, the advantages and disadvantages briefly. And as you can imagine, the advantage of surgery when you remove the uterus is you take out the uterus, therefore you take out the fibroids. The problem with the surgical treatment is that it's removing the uterus, it's surgery. And so there is the recovery time that's needed for surgery. Many busy women just can't take that much time out of their schedule. And they really don't like the idea of removing the uterus. I've used the term a couple times about interventional radiology or that I'm an interventional radiologist. Well, really, what is an interventional radiologist? Um, My mother still asks me that question. And really, in simplest terms, an interventional radiologist is a physician who is board certified, uses x-ray imaging to perform non-surgical, minimally invasive procedures. So let's talk a little bit more detail about the uterine fibroid embolization procedure. The very first thing you need to know is that this is not surgery. This doesn't require general anesthesia. This really requires just a tiny little nick in the skin. We do that in the groin, and through that tiny little nick, which doesn't require stitches or anything, I can insert a small catheter into the artery. And then while I'm watching with x-ray guidance, I advance that catheter into the artery that supplies the blood flow to the fibroids. So this procedure is performed in what's called an interventional radiology or an angiography suite. It looks a little bit like an operating room, but it has modern x-ray equipment. When we do the procedure, it usually takes less than an hour to perform, and it usually only requires one overnight stay. So what should you expect? Well, when we do the uterine fibroid embolization, as I told you, we are doing this not under general anesthesia. We are actually doing this with conscious sedation. And conscious sedation is means you're just really kind of sleepy during it. The procedure itself is not very painful. And 
sedation through your IV is more than adequate to control any discomfort you may have. After the procedure, you may have some pain, you may have cramping. All of that is usually well controlled with IV pain medicine, and that's really why we keep you overnight. Most women will return to their normal activities um, within a week of the procedure. So the thing that most of you really want to know is, does this procedure work? And the good news and what you can feel very confident about is that the interventional radiologist at Community Health Network have years and years of experience in treating fibroids with uterine fibroid embolization. Extensive research has been done in this uh, field and this procedure, and our success rates are up into the 90% range for treatment of your symptoms, meaning the vast majority of you will have significant improvement in that heavy bleeding, that pelvic pain, those other symptoms that are due to fibroids. The other thing is that this procedure is very effective whether you have one fibroid or you have multiple fibroids. And fortunately, once we treat it, it's very rare for these fibroids to grow back. So now I'd like to show you some diagrams of how we actually do the procedure. Again, the procedure is called uterine fibroid embolization. You may also see it called uterine artery embolization. They're really the exact same thing. And as I told you earlier, we do this through a small nick in the groin where I then thread a catheter up into the arteries and I place this tiny little catheter into the arteries that supply the blood flow to the fibroid. Once I get that catheter in the right spot and I see that that's the blood flow to the fibroid, I will inject very tiny little beads. These are so small that they're about 500 micron in size. But we inject these beads into the artery that supplies the blood flow. And these beads that are FDA approved, that have a very long safe track record, these beads will actually occlude the arteries that supply the blood flow to the fibroid. And with like all tumors, once the fibroid does not get any more blood supply, it will shrink and die. So why would you choose uterine fibroid embolization? Well, the advantages are many. First of all, as I mentioned, we can treat one or multiple all with the same procedure. This is really the most important, is that the procedure is minimally invasive, meaning there is no surgical incision, there's no surgery recovery, and we want to get you back to your normal activities, your normal life as quickly as possible. Because there's no surgery, there's really no scars. Adhesions don't form. There's very minimal blood loss. I've never had a patient that I've had to give a transfusion because of this procedure. And as I mentioned before, no general anesthesia. And so, therefore, you avoid the risk that go along with general anesthesia. And this last point it shouldn't be minimized. Many women feel that there is an emotional part of having their uterus removed. They're c concerned about the sexual dysfunction. We don't have that problem when we treat these fibroids with uterine fibroid embolization. But like all procedures, there are some disadvantages. First, remember we talked about success rate. 90% or more women have benefits. But there is a small percentage of patients that even though we perform the uterine fibroid embolization, they still have symptoms. Now, the good news is that by doing the embolization, 
We're not burning any bridges, meaning if you still have symptoms, you can have a hysterectomy with no increased risk. Many women will have cramping after the procedure, but it can be treated easily with medical management, meaning pain management. I'm going to start that one again. So like all procedures, there are some disadvantages. Fortunately, what makes this such a good procedure for many women is the disadvantages are very small. A small percentage of women may not have any results, improved symptoms after embolization. Most women will have some pelvic cramping afterwards. But the vast majority of women, even when they have pelvic cramping, it can be easily controlled with pain medication. The one thing that I will say about this procedure is if you're over the age of 45, there may be some chance that you will go into menopause after this procedure. We don't know really why, but we do see that in women who are close to menopause anyways. What we don't see is that problem in much younger women. And remember, we're not taking out the uterus, so there is still a chance that you can get pregnant. This is not a form of birth control. So I want to just mention a few questions that patients oftentimes ask me. Will my fertility be affected? Meaning, I still want to have babies, but I, but I have these terrible fibroids that are causing me a lot of symptoms. What we do know is this. Most of us who do a lot of fibroid embolizations have patients who go on to have normal pregnancies and deliveries. So we know it's possible. What we don't know yet is what percentage of change you may have in your fertility after this procedure. And the only reason we don't know this is because it has not been studied long term. Now, you might have seen one of my slides earlier in this talk talking about that actually fibroids can be a cause of infertility. So some women after treatment of their fibroids will find that their fertility is improved, but research is still going on. Another question I get asked a lot is, will my insurance pay for this procedure? And in 2014, almost all insurance companies pay for uterine fibroid embolization. They actually have recognized that this procedure, because it's less invasive, because it has less risk, and because women can get back to their normal activities, is cost-effective in the long run. In 2014, almost all women with fibroids have heard about there's other options besides hysterectomy. If you haven't heard about it, you need to talk to your doctor about it. There are many women who have undergone this procedure. This is a picture of Condoleezza Rice, who this is dating myself, but she was a former Secretary of State, underwent a uterine fibroid embolization, was back at work within a couple days. So in closing, I would just like to say, fibroids are very common. Fibroids can cause really symptoms that interfere with your daily activity, such like heavy bleeding, even anemia, pelvic pain, pressure you need to discuss with your doctor all treatment options. Keep in mind that there are now non-surgical ways to treat fibroids that are very effective. And if you have questions about this procedure, talk to your doctor or consult with an interventional radiologist who are experts in the performing uterine fibroid embolization. But there are options out there and thank you. If you have any further questions, let us know.